Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Survival Gear and today I bring you the review of the Rofus TR18. It's pretty much just a smaller version of the Rofus TR20. I know how much a lot of people love the TR20, so you guys are going to absolutely enjoy the TR18. It's got all the goodies that the TR20 had, uh, except for the inbuilt charger, um, but it's more smaller compact i don't think more smaller is a word i think i should have just use smaller it's smaller lighter compact uh got, got the same size magnet like you could pretty much do pull-ups with this thing anyway i pretty much just finished the whole review job done let's get the review started all right guys actually i know how much you guys enjoy looking at my face bad bullshit so um i figured i'll just stand here because this has got the reversible clip man this camera makes my face look like so red I don't know what's going on with this weather either but yeah so um it's still a tad heavy for the hat but i know not everyone wears around a hat everywhere like i do but yeah um so we'll see what it came with uh the warranty card refus put that one down uh spare o-rings too um the instruction manual now this is where i'm gonna get lost um the clip reversible clip lanyard and uh because it's removable it's like comes with the towel cap uh magnet too so uh yeah um yeah so i guess because it's removable it's included in the pack but it actually comes on the line anyway so yeah uh the one thing that i forgot to add what the ti18 comes with i always stuff something up uh is this awesome uh sheaf these are really good quality. Alright, so the Rofus TR18 is pretty much the same as the TR20. So let's just cut and paste that review right here. Nah, it differs a little bit. It is smaller, lighter and more compact. It's still got the adjustable head. Uh, it utilizes the same detachable magnet as the uh, TR20 does. It also utilizes the same Cree XPO HIV3 with a maximum output of 1100 lumens. The same as the TR20. This one appears to be a little bit brighter, but that could be because it's using an OP style reflector and it's a lot more floody than the TR20. Uh, it's got the adjustable head, but now the head adjusts a lot more than what it could before. Uh, before it would only do 90, uh, 90 degree angle. Now it rotates to 150 degrees. So we can do it one handed now. It's pretty easy, a lot easier than what it was. It rotates all the way around to there you can see how good that, that rotates it rotates easy as look at that just to get to 90 degrees cruising so yeah as i was saying it uses a uh, orange pill style reflector with the same ar coat of glass which will give you a peak beam intensity of 4673 cd basically 136 meters throw to the tree at 100 meters it makes it but it's pretty washed out but you would be expecting that from a uh, floody light anyway. Um, innovative single button offers access to fire brightness levels and three special modes. Unlike the TR20, this time Rofus went with a single button switch, side switch. It's still lit. Uh, this appears to be the same button as was found on the Rofus KR20. Uh, they are great buttons. It appears to have a stainless steel uh, bezel around it too. Uh, high efficiency constant current circuit provides maximum runtime of 320 hours on the lowest mode it's got like a ultra moonlight mode which is only like one or two lumens it's going to run for about 320 hours on a uh, 18650 integrated power indicator light displays remaining battery power only available when using 18650s uh, this is pretty much comes basically standard on um or Rufus lights right now that I've been testing. Uh, memorize function ability, direct access to moonlight output. So if you love moonlight, you're gonna love that option to go directly to moonlight. Uh, ultra compact and lightweight. Its diameter is 24.5 mils and its length is 118 millimeters. So 11.8 centimeters. It's basically the same length and diameter as a Convoy S2 Plus. And it's a little bit smaller than the BOLF A6. It also weighs 69.5 grams without the magnet and clip. 
So if you're going to carry it like you'd be carrying your S2 Plus that doesn't have a magnet stock or it doesn't have a clip, it's going to be lighter than a Convoy S2 Plus. Uh, switch incorporates a specially designed lock function to prevent accidental illumination. So the switch has a lockout mode, but you can see it's recessed inside the body. So even if I roll it on there, it's not going to turn on anyway. Even if we put this head flat, it's not going to roll on there, sweet as. Uh, reverse polarity protection prevents damage from incorrectly inserted batteries. Uh, comes in handy because this can be run on two 16340s, which is another update from the TR20. The TR20 could only be run on CR123s, not 16340s. Constructed from aero grade aluminium alloy with hard type 3 anodizing finish. Pretty much basic nowadays. Uh, micro textured reflector offers wide angle lighting. Uh, pretty much what they're saying is that they just change the reflector type to an OP style. You can see it's got the little grooves there. Uh, waterproof in accordance to IPX8, uh, 2 meters submersible, which is great. That's going to come in handy because this can be used as an EDC flashlight, so that'll be good. And impact resistant to 1.5 meters, and obviously it couldn't be tail stood. Um, I don't think you'll need it to tail stand it because you can just magnet it to the wall anyway. But obviously, if you're in like a concrete or a brick room, you can't really magnet it anywhere unless you've got a metal head and you can magnet it to your head. Alright guys, now we'll just run through the modes. Um, this is going to be a bit of pain in the ass because I'm outside and um, it's pretty sunny. So yeah, we'll try it. Uh, we'll start out on moonlight mode, which is two lumens for 320 hours. To access that, you simply push and hold. And there we can see it. it's not that bright, if you hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, and that's moonlight mode. And then you simply click off. And then that's it. Uh, it has a memory mode, but it doesn't memorize moonlight mode. So... If I just simply push once, you'll see that that started on a lot higher mode uh, and memorized my last used mode, which I'm pretty sure was high mode. After moonlight mode, we got low, which is 16 lumens, 88 hours. So we'll turn it on and then we'll push and hold. So now that's off. And that should be low mode, 16 lumens. Uh, then we've got medium mode, 65 lumens for 29 hours. That's that mode there. Uh, then we've got high mode, 230 lumens, 455 minutes. I'm not sure why they said minutes, not hours, and then minutes, but that's okay. Uh, then we've got turbo mode, push and hold to get to that, uh, which is 1,100 lumens for 30 seconds. Then it changes down to 550 lumens for 75 minutes. Uh, basically, because this is a lot smaller and lighter than the TR20, there's no constant moonlight um, high mode, sorry, turbo mode. So you won't get the 1,100 lumens for quite as long, but you can push back up modes once it steps down. That's pretty sweet. Uh, so the difference between this and the TR20 also is this can be run on 18650s. Uh, it doesn't have the inbuilt charger, so you don't get one included in this package. Uh, CR123, so off the shelf uh, CR123s, and the rechargeable RCR123s, or in other words, uh, 16340s, this can be run on, and the TR20 could not be run on those. Uh, the voltage gap between 6 volts and um, 8.4 volts was way too high. I should also add before I get too far in front of myself. Uh, it has a strobe, beacon, and SOS mode. Uh, they are 1100 lumens, and they run for about 3 hours each. Uh, I'll show you how to access them. Alright guys, so the roughest TR-18 has um, three blinky modes. It has strobe, beacon, and SOS. They are each 1100 lumens and run for 3 hours each. Um, basically, to access them from any position, uh, you cannot memorize these modes either. You've got to click three times really, really quick. So we can see there now that that's on strobe mode. I believe that that's strobe mode. Then we push and hold. That should give us beacon mode, which it didn't. So that's strobe mode there. Push and hold. That's then beacon mode. Push and hold again. And then we get SOS mode. Uh, basically, these modes cannot be memorized anyway, so once you click it off, 
the light is going to forget that you're ever using them. Uh, to access them again, you really gotta click three times fast and that'll give you access back again to the emergency slash uh, strobe modes. All right guys, so the TR18 has some of the same features as the TR20, obviously. Um, it's got the location beacon, which these guys call, they don't call it location beacon, they call it a, I lost it now, I don't know where they put it, a positioning function. So basically to access that when the light is on, you um, press the switch until this power indicator changes to green. And there you can see it's flashing green. It's on green, sorry, not really flashing green yet. Um, from here on in, it will blink twice every three seconds, which will help you be able to locate the light in a dark position. Or if you just got it stored as your like light that you use every day, it'll blink and flash so you can find it, which you can't really see right now because it's too bright here. But yeah. If I put it closer to the camera like so, you can kind of see it blinking. You see that blinking? Yep. So the Rufus TR18 has a inbuilt power indicator. Uh, every time you turn the light on, it's going to um, flash the indicator in the side switch. And that's going to tell you how much uh, juice you have left in the battery. Um, if it flashes for 3 seconds with the green light, it means it's over 50%. And if it flashes for with the red light, it means the battery is under 50%. And when the battery becomes more and more depleted, it's going to flash the red power indicator very quickly. So you know that it's running out of battery soon. So to access lockout mode, uh, pretty simple. With the light off, so you can see right now that the light's off, you push and hold it for three seconds and um, the moonlight mode will eventually turn off and that'll mean that this is locked. So if I click on right now, nothing at all. It's not gonna click on. So to unlock that, we push and hold again for three seconds. And then it starts in moonlight mode. So that's how you lock and unlock the TR18. Uh, locking it is a bit, like I don't know if you really need to considering it's a recess switch and you can't push it anyway. But if you think you're going to have stuff pushing against it in your pocket, then by all means lock it. Uh, you can't lock it out through the towel cap, unfortunately, because it's not anodized. So that's your only lockout option, unless you want to take the towel cap the whole way off. And then you can do that. Alright, so no doubt I had to open my mouth and then uh, my phone overheated and had a meltdown. Um, basically because we're standing pretty much in the sun. It doesn't like it too much. I don't actually like it too much either. So yeah, um, I'll show you around the TR18 first. Uh, it comes with the angling head, obviously. 150 degrees, I think I've told you guys now like a million times. Angles like so. AR coated glass, OP style reflector. Uh, the single switch um, with the stainless steel bezel. The reverse facing clip, which can obviously move around. Um, it's got the removable magnet. So if we remove the magnet right now, this will be pretty much the same size as a S2 Plus. Uh, there's a lanyard hole there. Um, the knurling is really good. Uh, all the threads are really well cut. I'll show you guys the threads. That's the threads there, perfectly cut. Uh, unanodized, that's the o-ring there. You guys will not be able to see this, but that's the driver there. Um, yeah, so now while it's apart, I'll show you its size compared to the TR20. Oh, let me, the TR20's head is a little bit harder to move, obviously. A few people have that issue, but. Okay, so right now, if we compare the TR18 and the TR20, you can already see the uh, difference in size the um tr20 is a lot lot bigger than the tr18 the magnets love to come together Let me put it up like this way uh, if we look at the front both ar coated glass tr18 with the op style reflector and tr20 with the smo reflector um, tr20 does throw a lot further um, difference in the switches obviously 
uh, two stage switch on the TR20, single switch on the TR18. Oh, let me kind of roll this around. All right, I know what they want to do. They really want to do this. And then I want to hold it like this and use the force. <laughs> like a lightsaber, the double lightsaber. Um, weight wise, TR20 is a lot heavier. It's a lot bigger, a lot clunkier. Um, the head doesn't angle as much. But you do get the inbuilt charger and you do get the double switches, um, which is might be a killer for some people not to buy the TR18. Um, personally, I would go for the smaller size and exclude the charger. But then again, also you got to think uh, both 1100 lumens, but the TR18 steps down a lot quicker than what the TR20 does. I don't really notice any step down on my TR20, but maybe that's just me. Um, Build quality on both is amazing, as I've already said before. They're both built good. Uh, if you look here, I don't know if I'm tripping out, but the knurling looks like it's a little bit deeper on the TR18 compared to the TR20. It actually even feels a little bit deeper. Yeah, uh, looks-wise, I like them both. Besides, it's a bit dirty now. Uh, they both look really, really good. Uh, let's go hang them on the wall and talk about them a little bit more. So don't mind the rusty shed roof. Uh, it does have a few little rust holes because the water wasn't draining properly here. So it got like a bit rusty around here. Um, it still stays fairly dry inside. Funnily enough, it doesn't leak through there. It leaks when the water hits the door. It goes on the inside. Uh, this is pretty much where these two lights shine. The TR20 and the TR18 are uh, used perfectly good as work lights. Um, if I move back a little bit now, you'll be able to see what I'm actually using them for. They're on the shed and they're heads are angled down at 90 degrees and they're pointing down so you'd basically have a work light where i could work on my on that bench and have light from above which would be perfect for all situations yeah um the magnet is super strong on both they're pretty much the same magnets so basically with the tr18 being a lot lighter the magnet is a little bit stronger uh, basically all in all if you came here looking to see which one you should choose I cannot tell you because I like them both um, They both pretty much have the same features except for the TR18 is missing the inbuilt charger uh, That's pretty much the only difference if you don't mind using a single switch I don't mind using a single switch. I don't mind pushing and holding in two change modes doesn't matter to me uh, I would go for the smaller size TR18 myself um, but also you do get the SMO reflector in the TR20 which does give it a little bit of extra distance So it just depends what you want whether you want a little bit of extra throw you want a wider beam both 1100 lumens uh, So it all comes down to what you prefer Do you prefer a smaller floodier light or a little bit bigger light that throws a bit further and has the inbuilt charger? Uh, now we'll take these lights outside and see how they do and anything I forgot to mention in the review I will put inside now all right guys, um, now we're outside, it's a bit cooler. We can all have a laugh and a smile, or at least I can. I know all you guys in North America are like probably having winter in a pretty, probably had like a uh, white Christmas too. Down here, the Christmas was very, very hot. All right, so we've got it on moonlight mode right now. Two lumens, 320 hours. You can see it does more than enough job to uh, open up a door if that's what you want to do. Uh, we're about three meters away right now, so pretty far actually uh, next up this is low mode 16 lumens for 88 hours you can see it's a lot brighter uh, even if you shine it over there to about six meters away it still lights up those blocks there okay now we go up one more medium mode which is 65 lumens for 29 hours uh, this seems brighter than 65 lumens but I have just been standing here in the dark fiddling with the camera so I'm not sure let's move back a little bit so now we're a lot further we're about eight nine meters now and you can see it still lights up the door pretty well we'll have a look actually to the backyard where we usually stand kind of we're a little bit closer than usual right now but you can see it's doing an okay job you can still see it's lighting up the tree the little tree I should say okay next up is high mode 230 lumens for 455 minutes uh, doing a really really good job now you can see how wide this beam is it goes from there all the way across to there I think now we will move back to our standard spot and we'll see how it does
All right, right now we're at our usual spot. Let me put the camera straight. Uh, next up is turbo mode, uh, which will be 1,100 lumens. So that's turbo mode there. You can see that that does an awesome job. Lights up my backyard very, very easy. You see how wide the beam is? If we look on the floor here, you can see the beam starts right there. And then it goes the whole way around. Very, very cool. Uh, let's wait for it to step down. Uh, if you look at the tree, you can see that it is a cold white tint, but it isn't too bad. It's like a 6000K probably. Somewhere around about there on the XPL HI. See, it's not washing out the tree because it's so flatty. That's what the uh, OP style reflector does, or the textured, uh, sorry, sorry, the textured reflector, as they like to say. I know this video has already been going for a while because for me to run through all the modes, it took quite a while. So just step down. Uh, we'll try and push it back up and we'll see if we can get it to 100 meters. Right, that's on that's on turbo mode i kind of just want to show you guys the battery indicator as you can see there uh now we'll try it at 100 meters to the tree you can see it reaches the tree pretty well i can see that the tree pretty well lit up it is very spread out but of course it's supposed to be because it is a flutter um but it does reach the 100 meters so no doubt it'll probably just reach the 130 nothing too special but all right now we'll try it against a few other lights and see how it does Alright guys, now we've got the Rufus TR20 on. Um, I'll turn the TR18 on high mode and we'll see if it looks bright. So that was on memory mode. Uh, TR18 to the left, TR20 to the right. Um, you can see they're pretty much the exact same brightness. We might actually do a quick ceiling bounce test just to confirm that. Uh, but you can see obviously the TR20 is a lot flattier. Actually, let's wrap this up right now and we'll go do a ceiling bounce test quickly. And I'll show you guys what I mean. Alright guys, we're in the shed because I had the door open anyway. So just a quick one today, nothing too special. Uh, TR20 on right now. We're getting 62 lux. Uh, you can see the lights here in my hand. And it's reading 62 lux on the meter. You can probably just make that out, I guess. I could move it a little bit closer. I'll just bump it anyway. Might put the camera up a little bit. Alright guys, I'm not sure how well you can see that. But right now it's showing 62, 63 lux. Uh, so it's pretty much the exact same. Hopefully that you guys can see that. 63 lux right now. So you can see it's pretty much um, even with the TR20. Uh, this is the TR18 on. They do have pretty much the same drivers uh, and the same LEDs. So you would be expecting pretty much the same results. The cycle three. All right, guys. This is the uh, Convoy S2 Plus on here. Um, you can see a very neutral white tint. Uh, almost the same beam pattern actually as the uh, TR18. So TR18 to the uh, left and S2 Plus to the right. You can see the TR18 does appear to be a little bit more floody. That's just because of the reflector type. And also, I changed the um, this S2 to our XPG2, so it's a little bit smaller die. Uh, output, the TR18 wins hands down. Pretty cruisy there. Not much comparison between the two. If I had to EDC one of these, which one would I choose? I would have to go with the TR20 because of its extra functionality, but I do love the S2 Plus. It is a very well made light. Alright guys, this is the last comparison, uh, the Rufus, I think it's the KR20, <laughs> I just forgot my mind is blank out, yeah the KR20, uh, to the right, uh, TR18 to the left, uh, pretty much the same setup, only the KR20 is a dedicated thrower, and the TR18 is a dedicated flutter, uh, functionality wise for work, uh, TR18 wins hands down, the KR20 has its place as a tactical flashlight, it does a great job as that. Uh, you can see the tints are kind of the same. It looks a little bit warmer on the TR18, but... Alright guys, so I've got the TR18 uh, hanging off the side of my shed again. 
uh, with it angled down at 90 degrees and then I got the TR20 inside the shed uh, giving me light there basically that's what these lights are made for if we step back now if both these lights on that's over 2000 lumens there easy um, that's more than enough light to work with of course all right guys i know the review has been long um to show you through the ui and all the extras was a bit of a pain because it made the video fairly long uh if you're still with us um thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it i know at least you want to fast forward to the beam shots it just stepped down there it kind of ramps when it steps down so it doesn't step down from 1100 lumens to 550 straight away it kind of ramps uh yeah so as i was saying uh thanks for watching guys i know it's been a long ass video but yeah i enjoyed it still um and uh like and subscribe and thanks guys